November 2023, a whistleblower emerges, a solitary figure privy to secrets that challenge our understanding of the world. This individual, a member of an elusive inner circle, steps into the light with a story that teeters on the brink of belief and disbelief. Our whistleblower makes a bold declaration. This message will be their only communication, a one-time revelation. It stands as a testament to their authenticity. They are not here for fame or recognition, but to share a truth that they believe the world must know. As the narrative unfolds, it delves into the depths of UFO lore, an intricate tale of unexplained phenomena and mysterious sightings. The whistleblower weaves their knowledge into this leak, promising that those familiar with such mysteries will see the connections, the hidden threads that bind together seemingly unrelated events. This is not just a sharing of information. It is an act of revelation. The whistleblower asks us to keep an open mind, to consider the possibility of realities beyond our current understanding. They challenge us to see beyond the surface, to question the accepted narrative. With their final words, the whistleblower retreats back into obscurity, leaving behind a trail of intrigue and unanswered questions. Their message is a catalyst, not just to inform, but to inspire a deeper search for truth in a world where the full story is often hidden from view. Here is their story. In the heart of our narrative, the whistleblower unveils a startling claim. The phenomenon of unidentified flying objects, long shrouded in tales of extraterrestrial encounters, is in fact an earthly construct. According to this insider, the entire concept of alien visitations is a carefully orchestrated deception. The roots of this clandestine technology trace back to the ingenious minds of German and Nazi scientists. In the aftermath of World War II, their advanced research, it is claimed, fell into the hands of the United States. It was here, under a veil of utmost secrecy, that this technology evolved far beyond the public's imagination. This claim takes a dramatic turn by suggesting that the United States government, aware of the true origins and nature of these technologies, has deliberately perpetuated the alien narrative. The reason to camouflage the real truth of their technological advancements. By directing the public's attention to the stars, to the possibility of otherworldly visitors, they cleverly conceal the earthly origins of these mysterious flying objects. This narrative weaves a tale of deception and misdirection where the extraordinary is used to mask the advancements made in secret. It challenges the listener to reconsider long-held beliefs about UFOs and extraterrestrial visitors, proposing instead a scenario where the greatest secrets lie not in the far reaches of space, but much closer to home, hidden in the classified projects of earthly governments. The whistleblower's narrative deepens, revealing the rationale behind this elaborate cover-up. The technology in question is not just advanced, it's catastrophically powerful. The reason for shrouding it in secrecy is rooted in a chilling assessment of its potential for destruction. This technology, it's claimed, possesses capabilities so formidable that even a small, well-funded group could harness it with devastating effects. The scale of its destructive power is hard to fathom. However, the practical application of this technology is not as simple as it may seem. The smallest feasible operational unit would be the size of a van or a small bus, owing to the sheer scale of the components required. This size limitation, while still imposing, adds a layer of complexity that prevents its casual or accidental discovery. The narrative then poses a crucial question. If this technology is as accessible as suggested, why haven't other scientists across the globe stumbled upon it? The implication is that there might be a combination of factors at play, perhaps the uniqueness of the approach 
the specificity of the materials and methods involved, or a concerted effort by those in the know to keep this knowledge under wraps. This aspect of the story adds an additional layer of mystery and intrigue, inviting the audience to ponder the delicate balance between scientific discovery and the responsibility that comes with wielding such transformative power. In a twist that challenges the very foundations of modern physics, the whistleblower reveals a strategic redirection in the scientific community, masterminded by the United States over the past 50 to 70 years. The goal? To veer the brightest minds away from classical physics and towards quantum physics, thereby concealing a groundbreaking technology. This redirection, according to the insider, was not a matter of chance, but a carefully orchestrated effort. With the establishment of the National Science Foundation under President Truman, a subtle yet powerful shift was initiated. Funding and resources were channeled towards quantum physics, subtly coercing the scientific community to follow this path. This strategy was so effective that even the most stubborn physicists eventually conformed, swayed by the necessity of funding and the allure of new scientific frontiers. Yet, as the whistleblower suggests, this strategic focus on quantum physics has left the field riddled with contradictions, missing pieces, and unresolved mysteries. The narrative posits that these gaps are not mere scientific shortcomings, but are intentional. It's implied that the true understanding of physics, which has allegedly been solved, is selectively obscured by those in the know. They disseminate fragments of correct information, but always out of context, mixed with inaccuracies, leading researchers down endless paths to nowhere. From the outside, it seems like the focus is on unraveling the complexities of quantum physics. But according to this claim, it's a journey with no destination. Even the most accurate constants and formulas, when applied within the framework of quantum physics, are doomed to yield fruitless results. The whistleblower admits to not being a physicist, acknowledging the possibility of an imperfect explanation. Yet this very admission lends a touch of authenticity to the claim. It's not a tale spun by a scientific expert, but rather a revelation passed down through layers of understanding, a complex truth seen through the lens of an informed observer. This narrative challenges the listener to question the very trajectory of modern physics and the unseen forces that may be shaping our understanding of the universe. The whistleblower, maintaining an air of mystery, offers only a tantalizing glimpse into the underpinnings of this concealed technology. While acknowledging a lack of expertise in physics or engineering, the individual hints at the core of this groundbreaking technology, suggesting that its power source is intricately linked to a form of hydrogen, distinct from any known isotopes and bearing a resemblance to what mainstream science labels as dark matter. By aligning this power source with a familiar yet mysterious element like hydrogen, the whistleblower subtly bridges the gap between known science and the realm of this secret technology. Furthermore, the individual asserts that the responsibility for uncovering the truth about this technology lies not with them, but with the public. It's a call to action for society to demand transparency and answers from their government. This positioning reinforces the idea of a deep-rooted conspiracy with knowledge gatekept by authorities and only accessible through collective societal pressure. Interestingly, the narrative acknowledges that there have been individuals who have come close to unraveling this mystery. These fringe scientists and thinkers, often dismissed as eccentric or fraudulent, might have unknowingly skirted the edges of this hidden truth. Yet their lack of direct ties to the government suggests that their theories, while a potentially on the right track, lack the complete picture or authoritative confirmation. 
this section of the story not only deepens the intrigue, but also plays on the common theme in conspiracy theories. The notion that the truth is often hidden in plain sight, dismissed or ignored by mainstream perspectives. It challenges the audience to look beyond conventional wisdom and consider the possibility of a reality far more complex and clandestine than what is commonly accepted. 1931. The narrative unfolds further, delving into a pivotal historical moment. In the year 1931, a group of German scientists working in the shadows of a burgeoning scientific revolution achieve a monumental breakthrough in physics. Their discovery? A nascent form of anti-gravity technology, a concept so advanced and so transformative that it seems to leap straight out of the realms of science fiction. This clandestine group, backed by affluent industrialists, finds themselves at the crossroads of history. The industrialists, driven by a blend of ambition and curiosity, have been the financial muscle behind this groundbreaking research. Their vision and resources have enabled the scientists to push the boundaries of what was thought possible in the realm of physics. As the whispers of their success grow louder, a demonstration is arranged for none other than Adolf Hitler, a figure whose rise to power is on the horizon. This meeting, cloaked in secrecy, marks a turning point. The implications of such technology falling into the hands of a regime like Hitler's are both staggering and terrifying. The potential for anti-gravity technology to be weaponized or used for unimaginable purposes adds a chilling layer to the narrative. This moment in 1931 is painted as a convergence of scientific innovation, political ambition and historical fate. It suggests a hidden chapter in the annals of science where breakthroughs occur in the shadows, guided by motives both noble and nefarious. The story hints at the complex web of politics, science, and power that shapes the course of human history, often in ways that remain unseen and unacknowledged by the broader public. 1933. 1933 marks a crucial juncture in history as Adolf Hitler assumes control in Germany, bolstered by the Enabling Act. With this newfound power, Hitler's vision for his war machine takes a dramatic turn. He fixates on a groundbreaking technological development, a novel form of anti-gravity previously showcased by German scientists. Convinced of its potential to create an unbeatable aerial force, Hitler insists on integrating this technology into aircraft design. This pursuit, he believes, will render his military campaign invincible and unstoppable. As the year progresses, a test flight of this anti-gravity technology is undertaken. The aircraft, embodying a bell shape that would later become emblematic of this secret endeavor, soars into the skies. However, this ambitious test culminates in an unforeseen disaster. The aircraft crashes in Italy, where it is swiftly confiscated by the Italian government. This incident, however, is more than just a technological failure. It becomes a moment of revelation for the Nazi scientists responsible for the development of the anti-gravity technology. As they grasp the full extent of Hitler's war plans and the role their invention is meant to play in it, a sense of moral conflict emerges. Alarmed by the destructive potential their work could unleash under Hitler's command, the scientists make a clandestine decision to deliberately slow down their research and development efforts. This strategic slowdown by the scientists is a subtle act of resistance, a silent protest against the weaponization of their scientific breakthrough. It reflects a deep internal struggle where the pursuit of scientific advancement collides with ethical considerations and the harrowing reality of war. Their decision to impede the progress of the anti-gravity project underlines the complex interplay 
between scientific discovery, moral responsibility, and the dark ambitions of a totalitarian regime. Could this bell-shaped craft have been the elusive Die Glock, known in English as the Bell? Described initially by Polish journalist Igor Witkowski and later brought to the fore by military journalist Nick Cook, Die Glock is shrouded in a veil of enigma and controversy. Portrayed as a top-secret device, possibly a weapon of unparalleled power, its descriptions often intersect with the realms of anti-gravity research and suppressed free energy technology, even touching the fringes of occultism. 1943. 1943 presents a pivotal chapter in the narrative of World War II. Italy, a key player in the conflict, faces defeat. In the wake of this development, an unexpected entity enters the scene, the Vatican. The Vatican, known for its religious authority and diplomatic connections, steps forward with crucial information. Their focus is not on the theological or the ecclesiastical, but on something far more enigmatic. The crashed anti-gravity aircraft, a relic of advanced technology that had been a secret of the war. The Vatican, while not directly involved in the storage or handling of the craft, had become privy to its existence and the details surrounding its ill-fated journey. Recognizing the significance of this discovery and the potential implications it held, they reach out to a new emerging power on the world stage, the United States government. This outreach by the Vatican is not merely an act of sharing information. It is a strategic move, one that could potentially alter the balance of power and technological advancement in the post-war world. The Vatican's decision to involve the United States signifies a shift in the dynamics of the conflict, redirecting the course of secret technological advancements from the crumbling European theatres to the burgeoning superpower across the Atlantic. For the United States, this communication opens a door to unforeseen possibilities. The prospect of acquiring and studying the crashed craft represents an opportunity to leapfrog into a new era of technological supremacy, a chance to harness and perhaps even reverse engineer a technology that had been shrouded in secrecy and enmeshed in the war efforts of a now defeated Axis power. As the story unfolds, the audience is drawn into a world where the lines between science, politics and power blur. The Vatican's role as an intermediary in this transfer of secretive knowledge adds a layer of intrigue, highlighting the complex interplay between different global forces during a time of monumental change. The year 1943 thus stands as a turning point, not only in the trajectory of the war, but also in the hidden saga of technological advancements that continue to echo through the annals of history. 1944. 1944 marks a significant turning point in this intriguing historical narrative. In an operation clandestinely named Moonshot, the United States government embarks on a mission of exceptional secrecy and strategic importance. Their objective is clear and groundbreaking, to retrieve the mysterious Bellcraft, an advanced piece of technology that had previously fallen into Italian hands after a crash. This operation, shrouded in layers of covert planning and execution, represents more than a mere recovery mission. It's a leap into the unknown, a venture into the realm of unprecedented technological marvels that had the potential to redefine the boundaries of aviation and physics as known at the time. Operation Moonshot, meticulously orchestrated, sees American operatives delving deep into the heart of war-torn Europe. Their mission is fraught with challenges, navigating the volatile geopolitical landscape of a continent in the throes of World War II, evading enemy detection and securing an object so advanced and so coveted that it could change the outcome of the war. 
The Bellcraft, with its enigmatic design and rumored anti-gravity capabilities, had been the subject of intense speculation and intrigue. Its recovery by the United States was not just about gaining a technological advantage in the war, it was about capturing a piece of future history, a key to unlocking potentials that could propel American technology decades ahead. As the operation unfolds, it becomes a symbol of the United States' growing prowess and strategic foresight. In a war where information and technology were as crucial as firepower, Operation Moonshot stands as a testament to the lengths nations would go to secure an edge over their adversaries. The year 1944, therefore, emerges as a pivotal moment in this alternative history. It's a year that witnesses a bold move by the United States, setting the stage for advancements and global dynamics that would resonate well beyond the confines of World War II into the realms of Cold War politics and the space race that defined the latter half of the 20th century. 1945. 1945 emerges as a year of profound transformation and pivotal maneuvers in the aftermath of World War II. As the conflict draws to a close, a new kind of strategic operation takes shape under the code name Operation Paperclip. This initiative represents a significant shift from the battlefield to the realms of scientific intrigue and technological supremacy. Some of the most prominent figures included Werner von Braun. Perhaps the most famous of all, von Braun was a leading figure in Germany's rocket development program, most notably the V-2 rocket, during World War II. He later became a key player in the development of the US space program including the Saturn V rocket, which eventually enabled humans to reach the moon. Kurt H. Debus, an aerospace engineer who worked on the V-2 rocket program in Nazi Germany. In the US, Debus became the first director of NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Arthur Rudolph. He played a crucial role in the development of the V-2 rocket in Germany. After the war, he worked in the United States on the Pershing missile and Saturn Fifi rocket programs. Hubertus Strughold, known as the father of space medicine, Strughold contributed significantly to US aerospace medicine, helping to design the pressure suits and life support systems used by American astronauts. Hans von Ohain. Although not directly a part of Operation Paperclip, von Ohain who developed the first operational jet engine in Germany, later came to the US and worked on jet engine technology. It's important to note that while these scientists contributed to significant advancements in science and technology in the US, Operation Paperclip remains controversial due to the backgrounds of these individuals. The primary focus of Operation Paperclip is the recruitment of German scientists and engineers particularly those who had been deeply involved in the development of anti-gravity technology. This operation is not merely a routine assimilation of scientific talent, it is a carefully orchestrated transfer of groundbreaking knowledge and expertise. In this covert and strategic process, hundreds of these German scientists and engineers are quietly integrated into various American research and development programs. Their knowledge, acquired through years of experimentation and innovation under the Nazi regime, is now redirected towards advancing American technological frontiers. This influx of scientific acumen propels the United States into a new era of technological exploration and development. The implications of this move are profound and far-reaching. It not only bolsters the United States' position in the emerging Cold War landscape, but also lays the groundwork for monumental advancements in aerospace and other related fields. 1945 thus stands as a watershed year in this alternate historical narrative. It marks the beginning of a new chapter where the spoils of war are not just territories, 
or political influence, but the very minds that hold the keys to scientific and technological supremacy. This strategic move by the United States sets the stage for a future where the boundaries of possibility are constantly being redefined, driven by the expertise and knowledge of those who once worked under the shadow of the Third Reich. 1947. The year 1947 marks a dramatic and enigmatic chapter in the annals of clandestine technological endeavors centering around the infamous Roswell incident. The story unfolds with a catastrophic test flight of an experimental anti-gravity craft, culminating in a crash that sends shockwaves through the corridors of secrecy and conspiracy. A rundown of some of the key players of the Roswell crash and cover-up, Colonel William H. Blanchard. He was the commanding officer of the Roswell Army Airfield, RAAF, in 1947. Blanchard ordered the press release that initially reported the recovery of a flying disc. Major Jesse Marcel. As the intelligence officer at RAF, Marcel was one of the first military officers at the crash site. He played a key role in initially identifying the debris as something extraordinary before the narrative was changed. General Roger Ramey, he was the commanding general of the 8th Air Force, headquartered at Fort Worth Army Airfield in Texas. Ramey was involved in the retraction of the initial flying disc story, presenting the debris as a weather balloon. Walter Hout, he was the RIEF public information officer who issued the first press release about the recovery of a flying saucer under the orders of Colonel Blanchard. Years later, Hout gave a sworn affidavit describing a cover-up and the existence of extraterrestrial material and bodies. Sheridan Cavett, a counterintelligence officer, Cavett was one of the first to arrive at the crash site with Marcel. His accounts of the incident differed significantly from Marcel's, leading to more controversy and conspiracy theories. Glenn Dennis, a mortician in Roswell, Dennis claimed to have received inquiries from the RAAF about preserving bodies and later said he saw alien corpses at the base. Frank Joyce, a local radio announcer, Joyce conducted an interview with rancher Mac Brazel, who first discovered the crash debris. Joyce played a role in publicizing the event. Roswell, New Mexico becomes the epicenter of a narrative that would forever alter the public's perception of extraterrestrial possibilities and government cover-ups. This test flight, originating from the now legendary Area 51, ends tragically with the loss of two test pilots. It's not an isolated incident, but rather the third in a series of such tests conducted in June of 1947. In the event of an emergency, protocols dictate a desperate attempt to reach one of several briefed Air Force bases across the country. The pilots, facing imminent disaster, aim for Carswell Air Force Base, but tragically fall short. The investigation into the crash hints at a possible lightning strike as the cause, suggested by distinctive markings found on the debris. This incident, however, transcends its immediate tragic dimensions. It becomes the seed for what is arguably the greatest disinformation campaign in modern history, giving birth to the extraterrestrial conspiracy theories that still captivate the imagination of many. The initial statement by the Roswell Army Airfield, RAF, about capturing a flying disc inadvertently fuels this fire. In a strategic twist, the government embraces this alien narrative, deliberately casting the weather balloon explanation in a dubious light. This tactic is designed to steer public curiosity towards alien technology, an enigma that suggests an otherworldly origin defying replication or understanding. The logic is cunning. An alien craft, perceived as an unfathomable enigma, diverts attention from the more unsettling truth of human-engineered advanced technology. Thus, 
Roswell becomes a landmark event, not just in the history of supposed UFO encounters, but as a masterclass in the art of misdirection by embedding the truth within layers of fantastical speculation and deliberate misinformation. The real advancements in anti-gravity technology remain shrouded in mystery, hidden behind the more palatable and far-fetched facade of extraterrestrial visitation. This intricate web of truths, half-truths, and outright fabrications continues to shape the narrative of ufology and government secrecy, making Roswell a symbol of the eternal quest for truth amidst a sea of deliberate obfuscation. 1954. The year 1954 marks a pivotal moment in the clandestine saga of advanced aerospace technology as it witnesses the first successful out-of-atmosphere test flights. This era heralds the advent of the fourth generation of these highly sophisticated crafts embodying a technological zenith that astonishingly remains largely unrivaled even by contemporary standards. Crafted with the culmination of decades of covert research and development, these spacecrafts are not just marvels of human ingenuity. They represent the threshold of our exploratory ambitions. The technology underpinning these vehicles is so advanced that subsequent improvements are largely confined to material science and alternative designs, indicating a plateau in the core technological principles. As the 1950s progress, these test flights grow increasingly ambitious, venturing farther into the vast expanse of our solar system. Each successful mission reinforces the remarkable capabilities of these crafts and underscores a profound leap in aerospace technology. These missions, shrouded in secrecy, push the boundaries of what was previously thought possible, quietly rewriting the playbook of space exploration. In these secretive expeditions, humanity silently crosses new frontiers, with spacecrafts navigating the voids of space far beyond the Earth's atmosphere. These journeys, though hidden from the public eye, are testaments to a quantum leap in technological prowess, suggesting capabilities that, if revealed, would astonish the world. This chapter in the hidden history of space exploration, marked by its breathtaking achievements and enveloped in layers of secrecy, stands as a stark reminder of the dichotomy between public knowledge and the classified advancements of the time. The legacy of these missions, conducted in the shadows of the Cold War era, continues to fuel speculation and wonder about the true extent of human achievements in space exploration, long before the celebrated milestones of the space race became public knowledge. 1963. In 1963, the narrative of secret aerospace advancements takes a bold and ambitious leap as humanity embarks on its first intragalactic test flights. The target, Proxima Centauri, our nearest stellar neighbor. This marked a monumental step in human space exploration, far surpassing the confines of our solar system, which had been the limit of previous missions. The scope of these missions was unprecedented. Three spacecrafts were launched in a span of roughly a year, each one tasked with the monumental journey to another star system. However, the boldness of these missions was matched by their mystery. None of the spacecrafts nor the 14 brave souls aboard them ever returned. The reasons behind their disappearance remain an enigma, shrouded in the vastness of interstellar space. Due to the unknown and potentially perilous nature of these missions, the program was abruptly halted. The loss of these explorers and the uncertainty surrounding their fate cast a somber shadow on this chapter of hidden space exploration. The risks were deemed too great and no further attempts were made to replicate these daring voyages. Moving forward, the narrative of UFOs and UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena, often gets entangled 
in a web of disinformation, speculation, and sometimes outright fabrication. Among the myriad of these stories, two incidents stand out for their peculiar nature. The first, known as the Phoenix Lights, is attributed to a malfunctioning cloaking device on one of the advanced crafts. This technology, supposedly capable of bending space-time around the craft to render it invisible, faltered during a re-entry, revealing the craft's presence. The phenomenon of these lights, seen primarily at night, is due to the limitations of the cloaking technology, which can be betrayed by certain atmospheric conditions, leading to visible distortions. The second notable incident involves the mysterious MY370 videos, which have recently resurfaced. These videos reportedly showcase technology unmistakably human-made, yet far beyond the publicly acknowledged technological capabilities. The legitimacy of these videos, hinting at advanced and secretive aerospace technology, adds another layer of intrigue to the ongoing saga of unidentified aerial phenomena. As the story unfolds into more recent times, it becomes increasingly clear that the line between fact and fiction, between what is publicly known and what remains hidden, is often blurred, leaving much to the imagination and speculation of those who dare to look towards the skies for answers. 2023. In 2023, David Grush emerges as a pivotal figure in the lore of UFO and extraterrestrial narratives, especially regarding the purported involvement of the US government in highly classified UFO retrieval and research programs. His claims, surrounded by a haze of intrigue and skepticism, suggest the existence of spacecrafts of non-human origin and, more startlingly, the remains of their pilots. Grusha's allegations extend beyond mere possession of extraterrestrial technology to insinuate that white-collar crimes were committed to keep these programs under wraps and that these cover-ups may have included extreme measures, even fatalities. Grusha's background in physics gives him a unique perspective on the UFO phenomenon, allowing him to approach these enigmatic subjects with a blend of scientific curiosity and critical skepticism. This background becomes crucial in his assessment of the situation. His statements under oath, characterized by cautious phrasing like, I was informed and I believe, indicate a careful choice of words, perhaps to navigate the complex and potentially treacherous waters of classified information and national security. His belief that the technology, allegedly retrieved and studied by the government, could be harnessed for the betterment of humanity is a significant aspect of his narrative. Grouch seems to advocate for the controlled and regulated use of this advanced technology, ensuring that it serves beneficial purposes rather than posing threats to global security and stability. This narrative, as presented by Grush, raises profound questions about the nature of technological advancement, the responsibilities that come with such knowledge, and the ethical considerations of keeping such potentially revolutionary discoveries shrouded in secrecy. It presents a scenario where the boundaries between science, science fiction, and conspiracy theories blur, creating a complex web of possibilities that challenge our understanding of what is known and what remains hidden in the realm of extraterrestrial encounters and technological marvels. David Grush's strategy in handling the sensitive issue of UFOs and advanced technology appears to be a masterful blend of cunning, foresight, and a deep understanding of bureaucratic and political systems. His approach reflects a nuanced grasp of the power dynamics at play and an innovative method to instigate change and foster transparency. By framing his revelations in terms of extraterrestrial technology and UFOs, Grush cleverly bypasses the likely barriers he would face if he spoke directly about secret advanced technologies possessed by the government since the 1940s. His allegations about the government's possession of ET craft serve a dual purpose, 
They capture the public's imagination and interest, making the topic more palatable and sensational while simultaneously avoiding direct confrontation with the more sensitive aspects of classified information. This strategic framing also plays into the government's approval process for public disclosures. By presenting his narrative as one of UFOs and extraterrestrial crafts, a narrative often dismissed as fringe or conspiratorial, the government may have been more inclined to approve his DOPSER Defense Office of Pre-Publication and Security Review, believing it to be a harmless foray into the realm of science fiction rather than a serious disclosure of classified technology. Bush's ultimate goal seems to be to provoke curiosity and demand for transparency from both Congress and the public. By stirring up interest and controversy, he hopes to compel congressional leaders to investigate these claims independently, thereby uncovering the deeper truths he hints at. This tactic, if successful, could lead to a domino effect, where initial inquiries into ET technology uncover the more significant and potentially transformative secrets about advanced human-made technologies that have been concealed for decades. T. Townsend Brown Townsend Brown was a notable figure in the realm of experimental physics, particularly known for his research into electrogravitics and anti-gravity. His work, often surrounded by a mix of scientific interest and speculative intrigue, delved into the potential connection between strong electric fields and gravity, a concept that has stirred considerable debate and curiosity in both scientific and fringe science communities. Key points about T. Townsend Brown. Biefeld Brown effect. Brown's most renowned contribution is his study of what came to be known as the Biefeld Brown effect. This phenomenon involves the generation of thrust in a capacitor when high voltage is applied, which Brown interpreted as an interaction between electricity and gravity. Early experiments. His experiments started in the 1920s when he discovered that a Coolidge tube used in X-ray machines seemed to produce a thrust when energized. Brown theorized this was due to an interaction with the gravitational field. During the mid 20th century, particularly in the 1950s and 60s, there was significant interest from military and aerospace sectors in Brown's research. This was part of a broader exploration of unconventional propulsion systems during the Cold War era. Brown's research into electrogravitics proposed that strong electric fields could provide propulsion and possibly even anti-gravity effects. This idea led to experiments with devices known as lifters that use high voltage electrodes to generate movement, although mainstream science often attributes the motion to more conventional phenomena like ionic wind. Brown's work continues to influence those interested in unconventional physics and propulsion technology. His theories and experiments are often explored in the context of UFO research and alternative science narratives. Amidst the chaos and secrets of World War II, it's said that Brown embarked on a daring mission, a mission shrouded in the mists of war and a speculation. According to legend, Brown parachuted behind Nazi lines, a lone figure descending into the dark heart of enemy territory. His objective? To recover or investigate advanced Nazi technology, perhaps even prototypes of anti-gravity or exotic propulsion systems that could redefine the future of warfare. Could this have been related to the Nazi Bellcraft? The Die Glock? While historical records on such a mission remain elusive, the story resonates with the aura of espionage and high-stakes science. It paints a picture of a world where daring individuals like Brown push the boundaries of the known, often in secret and at great personal risk. While this tale of espionage and secret missions remains veiled in mystery, Brown's contributions to the field of electrogravitics and his exploration of the boundaries of physics are well documented.
continuing to inspire curiosity and debate among scientists and enthusiasts alike. Imagine a technology that allows instant communication, irrespective of the vast and seemingly insurmountable distances of space. Brown theorized mechanisms that could potentially breach these cosmic expanses, offering a way to send messages instantaneously, breaking the barrier of light speed that confines our current understanding of physics. Even more audacious is the notion of time travel. Brown's forays into the theoretical physics suggested the tantalizing possibility of traversing not just space, but time itself. Such a concept challenges our fundamental understanding of the universe and our place within it. Could research into instant communication and the insights gained from recovering Diaglock, which enables time traversal, account for the technology behind UFO phenomena? Might some UFOs and their pilots actually be humans from the future? It is possible that extraterrestrials have never visited Earth and the intense secrecy is due to the fact that we ourselves are the perpetrators? Final thoughts. As we draw the curtains on this narrative of shadows and stars, mysteries and marvels, let's ponder the unanswered questions that linger in the air, like stars twinkling with secrets yet to be unraveled. What truths lie hidden in the remnants of Nazi scientific endeavors? How did their quest for the unknown shape the future of aerospace technology? As we trace the journey of this technology to American shores, we are compelled to ask what breakthroughs were made? What secrets were kept from the public eye? What realities did T. Townsend Brown unearth with his groundbreaking research? Could his work have unlocked doors to realms we've only dared to dream of? In our modern era, as voices like David Grush push for UFO disclosure, we must wonder, what are they fighting to reveal? What could these disclosures mean for our understanding of the universe and our place within it? As we conclude, we leave you not with answers, but with invitations to seek, to explore, to question. What secrets does our universe hold? What mysteries await our discovery? The quest for knowledge is endless, and every question is a doorway to new realms of understanding.